project has seemed to follow me for whatever agency I've been with, and this time we've been able to deliver. We're very excited about the opportunity of doing electronic One of the things, the reason the State Controller's Office is doing this is the legislature told us to do it, all right? There was legislation passed last session that asked us to build an e-forms and digital signature capability. Have you ever noticed when you have legislation and they tell you what to do, thank goodness they left it broad enough <coughs> for us to interpret how to deliver that. So what we did was we did market research and we came back and we said we're going to do a convenience contract, a master services agreement, so that the entire state can benefit from what we're doing. All right? And that's what we're going to talk about later. <coughs>
signature of it, the legality of it, the binding of it. This makes it legally binding. You have a certificate of completion that if you ever have to go to court, you can take that with you. And then the last thing that I'll mention is retention. Not only is government, do we like our form, do we like everybody to approve it, we want to keep all of that information forever. Right? So again, retention is important. And you can set that by your account levels. You can store it in the cloud with DocuSign, or you can pull it back and store it locally. As part of the contract, um, state controllers also bought a, a fetch product, which allows you to pull it back to its location. We're going to store it in the cloud, all right, with our travel reimbursement. Might be some other documents that are more sensitive to us that we'll want to bring back. Again, depends on your business case and your reason for doing that. Again, I'm going to turn it over to Joe. Joe, you want to stand up? Joe is our um, customer success manager with DocuSign. And I'm going to turn it over to him to let you tell him more about DocuSign. I'll come up at the end and give you a little bit more detail about the contract that you are allowed to participate in. And again, answer any questions. Thank you, Sharon, for a wonderful introduction. <laughs> Thank you all uh, for having us here here today. Before I really get going, I have, I have a question. How, how many of you do not use an ATM card to get money from the bank? No. How many of you do not have a smartphone? Okay. How many of you have to use paper to approve and sign agreements, use fax machines, scanners, upload, print, sign, do it again. Suddenly you've got five versions of these papers and they're filing. Well, like ATMs and smartphones, that those days are going away. Our kids will not know what signing on paper was like because it's totally legally binding by every state law, every federal law. And the problem that we sought to, to solve was, it was all of this that I just talked about. Expense, the delay, the errors. When you go to paper, you break the digital workflow. We have all these systems upstream to manage the data, we create forms, and then we output it to paper, and then we try to pull it back in with imaging systems. So in many ways, DocuSign has closed the gap to straight through processing. And as Sharon is experiencing, and you will experience with your travel expense reimbursement forms, it's all about the speed, reducing costs, creating efficiencies for you and your employees. And the, the people of the state will really understand that you are working for them and making their lives a lot easier. Even the turnaround time on a request for something from the state. The document can be completed in five or 10 minutes instead of five or 10 days. So that's the promise. Um, we work across all industries. Government is one that we're really starting to focus on now. Thanks to the great work of North Carolina, you are, you are absolutely leading the charge, basically in the world, for a government entity to get into the space and get serious about creating a paperless workflow. Um, we've been around eight years. We have 70% market share. Um, as Sharon said, we are a cloud-based based, uh, uh, service. So it's set, there's no software to install, there's no servers to manage um, for you. So let me show you how this works, because it really opens some eyes. Some, you, you, you might be thinking, you know, e-signature is really something like I'm putting a, a JPEG onto a document, I drop it there. And as Sharon talked about the preparation, the execution, the storage, there's a lot more to e-signature behind the scenes than you, you probably thought, but if you're gonna actually execute and use the service, I'm going to start by showing you what it's like from a user perspective, signing a document. So I'm in a state agency, I'm sending a, a, a form that authorizes um, my employee, um, that gives me permission to do a drug test. Typically I hand in paper, might be out, scan it, upload it, the whole thing. That document is prepared and it's sent. This is a CDL consent form. And this comes right through to, let me see, this one, CDL consent form, I want to do this one. So 
So this is what I get in my email. They could be Outlook. You notice there was no plugin. I'm on Safari. I could be on Chrome. I could be on Explorer. I could be doing this on my iPad or smartphone. You see that it's branded. It's from the state of North Carolina. I can choose the messaging. You'll also notice there's no PDF attached. There's no document attached. We aren't pushing these documents across the internet. It says review documents. So now I'm going into the DocuSign service. Notice I didn't have to log in. So as a signer, I don't have to have an account. As a sender, of course, you do, and that's what Sharon has arranged for all of you. Open accounts, you can send documents. As a signer, this could be anybody. And you'll see that once I'm in here, it's gonna walk me through, oh, that's the one I already signed. So I'm going to show you quickly how to send this. Okay, I'm going to have to adjust the slides. Sorry about this. Let me go back and show you how easy it is to actually create a document. Seamless. My apologies. So I'm going to send this off authorization. I've created a template shared template, it's a CDL consent form. I'm gonna simply add a signer. So we have this document in our shared folder. Um, I'm gonna create, I'm gonna simply say, you know, the person that I want to sign this is Joe Signer. It's very simple. This is the document I'm gonna send. I can add tags if I want. I'll explain that later. I don't wanna preview it, I'm gonna send it. So now let's uh, let's rewind. software, there are no downloads, you can use any browser, it's branded. I get into this document and I'm guided through it. Um, you can see I can just click next. We have little thumbnails over here, so if there are multiple pages, it would highlight where you need to take action. <coughs> you can specify if you want to have self-guided navigation or not. I'm simply going to sign here, that authorizes. And pursuant to federal law, the first thing I have to do is adopt my signature. Technically, if I wanted to sign with an X, and that's what I say my signature is, that's fine. Um, you can see that you have a choice. In fact, you can specify if you want to give people three choices or four choices about which sort of font to choose. But I'm going to choose one and adopt it and confirm sign. And off it goes. So that's the signing process. And give them the option right now, they can download what they just signed as a PDF, they can print it if they wish. And what we allow you to do is when they close this window, when they're all done, you can resolve to any sort of page that you want. It's just sort of a branding piece of this. And you can imagine that I might be the first signer. I have to sign first. And 
then Charles and Sharon sign next, and they can do that in parallel. Or I can say, no, Charles has to sign first, and then Sharon signs. And imagine on that form, there were fields that were required. There might be a social security number. So it has to follow the three, two, four format. And you can set up that template such that they can't finish that document until that is input. Or you can have conditional fields. So there's a choice. Are, are, are you, are you uh, applying for A or B type of license? If you choose A, then the form will automatically say, then you have to answer questions one, two, three. If you choose B, one, two, three don't even appear. Then you have to answer, answer questions four, five, six. So you might be getting the sense this is, again, much more about just a signature. So now that I've signed it, the question is, what happens in here? So I'm back into my console. Let's see. Just time out again. So as a sender, I have this console that I can access. Um, and first of all, you'll see that it's tab navigation. It's very simple to see the envelopes are, are put into folders. Now the inbox sent draft. Um, you can view all of your templates, of course. Um, you can manage your settings in, in this account. But what you see is this completed, completed document. So I'm going to take a look at this document. And sure enough, there it is, all signed, all completed. Now, that is stored in a, in a secure environment. It's hashed. We maintain it as long as you want. You can set your own document purge standards. As Sharon said, when this completes, if you want to pull those documents and put them onto FileNet, into SharePoint, into Documentum, wherever you want, you can process those so they go to your side. You can even tell us, you know, once we pull them over, we want to purge them. But one of the things that we will always keep is this audit trail. So, and this is data that is all also available through an API. So what you're seeing is the use of this in a console. But imagine if you have a document generation system, <coughs> sort of like an order management system or something. And that's typically where your users would generate a document. You can put a button in there that says send for electronic signature. So your folks don't even really know it's DocuSign. It's just a way to get the electronic signature. But this is a sample of what we track in terms of an audit trail. You know, I show when it was sent. Um, I show who created it, when I sent them, what my IP address was, when Joe Signer viewed it, and because I'm um, on Wi-Fi and we have GPS enabled, I want to know where that person was when they signed it. And sure enough, there I am, right on Resort Drive. Little big brother-ish, but there are plenty of cases when, for example, it's a high-risk insurance application and somebody disputes that they signed it. So imagine if you could go to court or go to a trial and present this data instead of saying, yeah, we're pretty sure it was them, look, the signatures match or not. You do a little research, you know their IP address, they were, they were in my office. We even have a capability now where you could, you could take a picture of their driver's license with your phone or with an iPad and upload it to the envelope. You can take a picture of that person and upload that envelope and voila, it's there. So we've got a very, very robust way to manage the, the audit trail and the reporting. All of this capability that you've seen is available through an API. We support both SOAP and REST. Um, in fact, the, the API volume against our system is more than the web, web console. Because we've talked about high volumes of transactions. For example, we have a home builder that uses Oracle On Demand and they round trip all of their envelopes for purchase agreements, you know, in and out of the market. And a lot of the people aren't even, all they know is an e-signature, it's out, it's back, it's done. 
So this um, you can also see in terms of reporting, there's not going to be a, a whole lot of data in this account that I created. But we have dashboards. So you can look at the envelope status. And you can get reports real time about how many envelopes are sent, viewed. You can create those views by your users or by department, what type of template, how many are out for signature, how long have they been out, um, what are the templates that have been sent, um, how many are waiting my signature. And again, these statuses can all be pulled in through the API, so you can have a dashboard of your own that sort of shows you in an aggregate view where are all my documents. Are they out for signature? Are they not? Pardon me? Yes. So an envelope is our lingo for the documents you send and the metadata and the workflow instructions that sort of wrap, wrap around that. Um, it's more than just the document. Um, and you know we store that on our side. There are settings where at the end of a signing ceremony, you can send a notification email with the attached PDF that has been hashed. It's, it's effectively tamper-proof. Um, or you may choose not to send that. Um, but that's essentially what we call an, an, uh, an envelope. So um, I've given you sort of a flavor of signing and the sending. Um, if we really dug into a demo of all the features and the capabilities, it would probably be a couple hours worth of, of time. So I want to put this out to the audience. Do, do, do you have any questions? Signatures are, are, are easy. Um, the seals, is that a seal that is, is supposed to be physically applied? Or do you just need to see the seal? Without knowing all of the specific rules and regulations, you could create an image of that, and when they sign it, you would include what's called a signer attachment. So, for example, when I um, I did a, a version of this, a completed document, the CDL, and just for fun, I played around with this one, and I included the requirement for a signer attachment, which happened to be my driver's license. So I attach that. It very well could be that they attach, they attach an image of that document. Now, we are working right now to develop a process for e-notary. Because when you're doing, like for example, a, a home purchase at the end of the day, there's a notary public that's, that seals something. And technically, there's no reason why they have to do the physical seal. But if it's, if it's that level of requirement, we're releasing eNotary in the middle part of next year, so there, there may be ways um, to piggyback on that. We also work with the Department of Transportation. It does the same thing with the roads, designing the roads and all that. And they have given us, in fact, use case that we've been talking with them about. The other thing that DocuSign does is they can use things like Dropbox and things like that because the files are so large also when you get into CAD drawings. So there, there are, are there two ways. Uh, as Sherry noted, you can grab a file out of Box or uh, Google Box or Dropbox. I think an even faster way would be if these architects are working in some sort of CAD application and they're, they would typically say generate doc or print this out in the spirit of I, I need to print this to get it approved. We would work to integrate a button into that CAD application that says, Send for e-signature. We do that with 
I mean, we have these buttons in, in Oracle and SAP and a lot of homegrown systems and insurance companies. So the ideal would be they, they never print it out. And even for e-signature, you know, it's e it'd be a lot easier to apply that seal you know, on the document and send straight away, right out of their, their, their system. Any other questions at the moment? I have a follow-up question to what he asked. Okay. Uh, what are you going to deliver by the middle of 2013? Has that been clear with the engineering board from North Carolina and this other sanction in terms of... Um, so the middle of 2013 is the solution for oh, you know. sort of digital notary public. And I'm just thinking if, if there is this physical requirement to put a stamp, you know, where it, it creates sort of a 3D impression, then our solution might work. But I actually doubt that that's the case. Right. And they're working with the engineering board and all that. So we can, we'll, uh, we can get your names and all that. Keep you updated on our progress on that project. All right. And also, uh, we can keep the board updated. We can never keep the board on how we're progressing with that. And uh, again, they can get it out to the listserv. stamp and they, they we can authenticate who is in this session it's Joe Smith the architect that has this license number and here's an image of his or her stamp then we don't have to wait to do we could do that you know we could do that right now so let me go back to the presentation for a moment we did the demo one of the questions that that often comes up is is this really legal you know, and Sharon talked a little bit about this. The bottom line is it's legal at the federal level and at the state level. That's true for mortgages. It's true for titles. There are, there is still some resistance to this. You know, there, there were still people in 1985 that wanted to go get their money from the teller, you know, write a check on Friday for the weekend. It took them a while to sort of get to use the ATM. But from a legal standpoint, it's absolutely legal. And that was vetted by Sharon and her team. And if you do encounter resistance, we're happy to help you. We have a chief legal officer who has been in this space for a decade. He knows every sort of objection that can come your way from any you know, entity at the state or federal level. And he's, he's very good at, at, at talking through the issue and helping us get, get through that. Um, so a little bit about the agreement. This was signed in August 2000. As Sharon said, it's essentially a master services agreement which sets forth um, the pricing, for example, you know, what you can buy, how you can buy it. Um, and I'm happy to you know, talk about that, that pricing with you offline if, if, if you're interested. Generally, there are two ways to buy DocuSign. There's a seat which you might be accustomed to, it's like a user, and they essentially can send as many envelopes as they want. There, there is, in our agreement, a, a, a sense of reasonableness. If you buy one seat, you have 20 people in your department routing all of their orders through this one seat to obviously save money when you're sending hundreds of orders a month to those envelopes. That's a little bit beyond what's intended by a seat. Another way to do this is if you, if you do, in fact, deploy through an API, it's more natural that you would purchase by the envelope. So there isn't really the sense of a seat per se, but you're just funneling these transactions through our API. Um, yeah? Just some examples of what we've already deployed in the state. We use seat licenses for our contract administrators, because they're always sending documents for signature in the contract space. We chose to use envelope process for our travel and reimbursement form because we knew how many of those transactions we did per year. So it's really a return on your investment. Which way
walk through what it's like for somebody to send and somebody to sign a document. But you can also DocuSign enable a form that sits on a portal. So there isn't really a, a sender in that sense. You just click on a document and through a web form or maybe through an email link, you can populate the field of, of um, the name of the, the, the signer and their email address. So it could be a, you know, an expense reimbursement form or some travel documents on a portal. Somebody clicks it, instead of downloading and printing out and scanning and uploading, they begin the signing process right there. And we can embed that session inside of your portal with an iframe. So it's not always the case. What I showed you is called a remote signing, where somebody gets an email, they click it, they go to our service to sign it. But we can embed that same signing session you know, within, within um, your, your portal. You can also do in-person signing. So there might be a case when you're sitting right next to somebody. It's a new employee. You sent them their offer letter via DocuSign. They signed all the company policies and now it's the time to do the I-9. And you've got to see the documents. And you can either spin the computer around and have them sign it, or you can have a separate iPad here where you actually send me on the iPad and you hand that iPad to them and they execute it and then it shows that you're done. It's all done and you can take a picture of their passport, upload that, no more paper. So there are, there are, it's hard to imagine a signing ceremony that actually happens in real life that we haven't thought about. We've been around nine years and honestly we were in the space before it was ready. So that gave us a lot of time to talk with our customers and find out what they need and build every sort of possible feature. We roll out new features every quarter. So on November 2nd, we're rolling out a slate of 15 new features. Some of them apply to a lot of customers, some don't, but about three quarters of those came from requirements that our customers gave us. You know, as a user of our product, you can decide to turn those on or, or not turn them on. But there's no like new version to install, of course, because it's all in the cloud. Um, so that's pretty exciting. So how does this actually work? Well, essentially, if, if you think you've got a situation that would apply here, you can either contact Sharon or Charles or me or my colleagues, and we'll provide that information. And we typically begin with you know, a first call or meeting just to say, hey, why don't you tell us about your workflow? Or tell us about these documents. And we'll think on it and ask you a whole bunch of questions figure out, you know, there, there really is an opportunity here to help you, to create value, to save money on the budget and make things better for your constituents. Or not. You know, in some cases, like it's just, it's, it just won't work. But we'll get down into these discussions that I was just suggesting. So remote signing, is it embedded? Do your signers need to attach things? Do you have an envelope with a document? that Charles should see, but I want a setting that says Charles can see document one, but Sharon can't see document one, she can only see document two, we have that sort of figured out. Um, and that will result in, okay, here's where we think we need to go, and then we get into what's your time? What's the budget for this? Um, are your resources available? And if it's sort of yes, 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 we look to the MSA, we provide you good pricing and timing, and if you need professional services or not, and then we roll. I've seen straightforward web console based deployments get up and running in seven to 10 days. On the other hand, if we're building an integration with Oracle On Demand, where the back end documents are pushed to FileNet, and there are 16 different templates, um, and there are a need for four or five sub accounts, you know, that can take the typical three to six months. Um, but We'll be very upfront with you about that. Um, you know, I think Sharon's experience uh, has, has been very good in terms of asking the right questions, figuring out how big the box is, and, and then moving forward. So, um, I'm one of your contacts here. I'm based in San Francisco. Michael Hunt from San Francisco. Um, well, he's actually from North Carolina originally. James Cooper is in New York, East Coast. Um, I have a business card. You can contact us if you're super
super interested or just we want to learn more, we typically find that this level of demo just sort of scratches the surface of what you might want to know. Um, additionally, you can contact Sharon or Charles. Um, we've got their contact information, and we will provide this presentation to the conference hosts uh, so they can post on the respective host show website. So are there any other questions that I can address? Let me give you a couple suggestions real quick. Okay. I got a question. Uh, can you generally tell me how we get every employee with an electronic signature? Say we got 1,200 employees. How do we go through the process to create electronic signatures for those 1,200 employees? I'll be very clear. What I get from you is a name and an email address of an administrator. They need to activate the account. I put that in our system for Vision Account. Let's say it's you, sir. You get an email that says activate account. You click on a link, you put in your information, voila, your account's open. I will also include some training hours to be an admin because you're gonna to go to your preferences and you say, wow. My account's open, but how do I create right. that? So I'm getting there. Okay. You, you go to the preferences, you're gonna add users and have this option to upload a CSV file with with their name and their email address. And if you want to put them in groups, so you can manage all of your users by groups and profiles. So you might have five departments or sub-departments and you want each employee within a group, a sub-department group, so you can keep track of them. But you can just upload a CSV file to that. And each of them will then get an activation email. And they're ready to go. Alternatively, if you're using API, you want to suppress those emails because you might have people that you don't even want them to go into the web console. You only want them to access DocuSign via Oracle On Demand or your own homegrown system. <coughs> so we have many ways of ensuring that you know people with a certain email domain cannot log in at DocuSign.net. They can only access the service through the API. Short answer is what I, I, I just described. A couple things let me suggest for you. Right? Um, DocuSign has a, a premium wear product called DocuSign Inc. You guys all got your app phones and all that. You can go down there and download it right now. All right? You can use it. Charles uses it to sign his permission slip for his children. All right? You can use it in your personal life experience. It, the other option that you have, you can contact Charles or myself or Joe, and you can do a demo account. You can go out and play with it. All right? That's my way. You may have touched upon it. We have a legacy document management system, right? So if we say we have a form we want our employees to use, or well, say a job an application is signed, how do we how can we, can we fetch that and automatically bring it into our document management, or at least get it onto a file server so we can then move it into the document? So the scenario is you use DocuSign to get an executed document, you get it completed, it goes back into DocuSign as I showed you, and you want to put it in laser fish. Yeah. Yes, so there's a project, a product called Fetch, which is essentially an API, and you set it up to go and fetch all of your documents from your account, you know, once a night, or, you know, or, 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 or twice a day. And there's settings in there that allow you to sort of specify where they go when you grab some of the metadata off those envelopes, so you can organize them in a systematic way. It's not like they all just dump and you see all these envelope IDs like, what is this mess? And we bought that as part of the state contract, a license for the whole state. So that is already there for the campaign. Can you do something like that with just a workflow, say, after the last signature is applied, can that document go back to the originator and they say that 
Yes, yeah, so you can certainly set up your templates. So the very last thing that happens is there's a, a CC role, a carbon copy role, and that flows into a mailbox. You know, we, we see this a lot in financial services. Once the account application is complete, they want to automatically notify the operations team to open that new brokerage account, for example. So there's, there's, a, there's a box that a lot of people monitor. They can grab it. Or you can just push all of your documents through a different product. You can use an API call. Um, <coughs> call them essentially real time. So we're looking at it from a appraisal standpoint, from an HR standpoint. Okay. You know, we, we're doing the paper thing now. They want to be electronic. They want to have electronic signature for the employees, for the reviewer. And, and oh, this is a dream for that. Right. So, but Very when it's all said and done, the HR department wants that signed document back so they can import it into our SQL database to attach that employee's record. The sender automatically gets the completed document. So, the, you know, there's a crawl, walk, run, you've heard that. I mean, the easy way to crawl is you're going to copy the HR email at your department, and every one of these is going to be finished, and you set it up so that the subject of this email includes the name of the employee. Right? So then there's going to be somebody that would either just, they'll open that email and they'll move to SQL. You know, so the, the, the walk or run is they get that carbon copy, maybe just so they know that it's done. But on the back end, we're pushing those straight to your SQL database. So it eliminates that step of them having to manually do it. The key I found with every other software Sending out the offer letters. I mean, maybe you have an annual policy, a technology <coughs> security policy that all of your employees have to sign. It's all you do. All of you have to sign. You know, I mean, one way to, to figure out where you can automate is either stand next to the fax machine for a little while or the scanner and sort of watch what people are doing or what's coming through and quickly realize, wait a minute, oh, yeah, that, here's something we need to fix. Because once you really start to think about it, every Every form, I mean, the term form, if you abstract it, we all think of form as paper. But at DocuSign, we think of form as data. And it's, it can be presented on paper, or it can be presented on the screen. So the question becomes, what is a form a form? Question? Uh, your wet signature copy, is that, is that something like signature pay and say under the user or? The wet signature? Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, where you had your signature up there, where you pop copy your signature, your actual signature into that, and how does that get on the document? Okay, so um, what you saw is when I adopted my signature, um, it's all on our back end. So it had my name, and it basically converted that to one of 12 fonts. Oh, okay. So you just basically typed it in and it converted yeah. to a font. Right. Now, however, if I was doing that on an HTML5 browser, if I was on my iPad, the first choice I would have had would have been to handwrite my, my signature. I could still select it, but we detect what kind of browser you're in. So if I had my iPad, I would have actually signed it. Some people don't like to do that. You could choose to do that. Um, I'm not going to show you. you. You could actually choose to sign with a mouse instead of adopt a signature, but it's pretty darn fluky. Okay. It's pretty you also can upload your wet ink signature. Yes, so I can go to my profile and I can write my signature on a piece of paper. I can scan it, create like a JPEG, and upload that. The problem is getting the sizing just right because in our world, you can make the signature box big or small. You can adjust it. And working with that JPEG is a little bit problematic. If you open your profile on your iPad or your iPhone or anything, too, you can sign your signature in there and then save it.
once you go through that process of adopting, you know, if, if, if I came back next time, I wouldn't have to adopt my signature. They would know that it's, you know, Joe Signer at joesigner at gmail.com. It's the first time I go through that process that I have to adopt. Question over here? Can you guys just talk about, like, how you see the laws evolving as far as the fact that my name is in cursive at the bottom <coughs> of that, you know, document? Will those laws change over time? I, mean, I know it's a broad, you know, idea, but I mean, re realistically, it's no different than putting a checkbox at the bottom of the thing, right? That's absolutely correct. And if you look at federal e sign and all that, as Joe mentioned earlier, an X can count as your signature. So what we think of today as a wet ink signature or our physical signatures, that's gone away. And when you look at the digital world of signature today, all right, really what you've come with. of insurance companies that can now handle you know, 20 new policies a day instead of 10 a day. And it's one of the clearest ROIs that you can imagine. If, if you need to make the case for the investment in DocuSign and the, the benefit it's going to bring you and your employees and the state and the constituents, we're happy to help you with that. We've gone through that hundreds of times. The other thing I'll mention real quick, your administrator
terms of J.P. Morgan, Microsoft, Intel, Citibank, Wells Fargo. I mean, those companies are rabid about just the application security. In terms of the documents, we've had review after review about how they're encrypted, where they're encrypted. We have this double key approach with a thousand keys that you know no one person has access to. It's more than I can even explain. And then in terms of just authenticating who's signing it, imagine the way it happens today. You send a document to a fax machine, it spits out paper, somebody picks that up, signs it, sends it back. How secure is that? <laughs> I mean, who really signed that? I don't know. The angry ex-spouse who you know, now wants to do something. So you can authenticate via an email, you know their email address, and I know that's pretty lightweight too, because so many people hack you into their email. But you know, for a lot of workflows, that works fine. You could have phone authentication. So if someone gets an email and it says, you try to open it, it says, do you have your cell phone near you? Because the sender knows their cell phone number. Um, when you have your cell phone near you, click on this link. DocuSign calls them and says, what is the code on your screen? And state your name and that code, or punch in the code and state your name, and then we capture that voice and that they did it, and where they were, and what the phone number was. There's also knowledge-based authentication. Uh, we partner with a company called RSA, which is owned by a larger security company called EMC, and they will, um, as a sender, I can specify how many and what type of questions do I want to ask. And some of you may have seen this before, where you're applying for a credit card or something on, and they say, which of these street addresses have you been associated with before? Or in what city does your brother live? It sounds a little big brotherish, but these are what they call out of wallet questions. All these public databases have this information, and RSA will make somebody get through these hurdles if I want to be absolutely sure that the person I'm saying this to is the person. So there's, there's the, the, the biometric, you know, the voice, it could be just an access code, it could be telephone call, it could be knowledge-based authentication. And I would submit all of those, all of those are better than sending a document to an address or to a fax machine and getting something back and feeling really sure that the signer was who they say they are. One other thing that I encourage you to start looking in this space, and we've been experiencing this in the state government, is don't think you need to put more security on it because it's electronic today than you do manually, right? as Joe was mentioning with the fax machine. The other thing that was really important to us is DocuSign cannot see our documents. All right? they, are, they are encrypted. Uh, so that was important if you're storing them in the cloud. Uh, but again, what they do is process. That was the other thing that made us very comfortable of going to a software as a service. It's a process. Right? And we can get our completed documents back and store it ourselves. I wasn't here for the whole presentation, so I might have missed it, but okay. you, is there anything to be said about this process and HIPAA compliance? Uh -huh. We did have HIPAA uh, as one of our regulations that they had to meet, IRCA, and there was a third one, all right? So they do meet. We also had the Department of Health and Human Services was part of our project team that helped us make sure it met that compliance. We're working with the Department of Health and Human Services right now. Um, they have a lot of doctors who have to sign contracts with them. That's the first process that they're going to use, digital signatures or electronic signatures. And we will be ADA compliant for the site impaired in the middle of next year as part of our May release. The other thing One of the only SaaS providers of any service out there that will be fully compliant with the ADA rights for site impaired. The other thing I'll mention to you real quick if you're working with DHHS, I know a lot of local governments do. We are also going to integrate with NCID. So if you've got an NCID, um, you will be able to use it in the future as another, that first level of authentication. Right? So you know you've managed those uses. If you choose. And again, I know local government has a choice of such things. Well, thank you very much. Thanks for your time and attention.